Il condizionale, the conditional tense. So, first of all, I want to uh, briefly go through how to conjugate conditional tense. It's actually very similar to the future tense. Um, so, um, let's, um, I might start with ere, ire, and then um, go back to are. So, um, we uh, copy everything out until uh, and stop at the e. So, meter. And I'm just going to copy that for all six people. Meter, meter, meter. And then we add our um, then we add our endings. So for io, it's an e i ending. So mettere tu metteresti, lui lei metterebbe, noi metteremmo, voi mettereste, ISTE e loro metterebbero. The same thing is going to happen with dormire, so we're going to copy uh, up until the R, dormir, I'm just going to copy that, and then we're going to have the exact same endings as we had with ERE. So, dormi resti, dormi rebbe, etc. I'll just do that. So, dormirei, dormi resti, dormi rebbe, dormiremmo, dormi reste, dormirebbero. Now, what happens with are is the same thing that happens with are in the future tense. So, are um, go, go through an identity crisis. They want to be ere verbs. Um, if you just think of it in this um, silly way, perhaps you'll remember. So, are are ere wannabes, so let them become ere verbs. So, parlare becomes parlere. Okay, therefore we copy the stem parler. So, we parler, parler etc. And then we're going to add the exact same endings. Parlerei, parleresti, etc. Okay, so here we have it. In summary, um, we have the same endings for all of them. So, e, este, ebbe, emmo, este, ebbero, regardless of whether they are um, are, ere, or ire verbs, and the only thing we must remember, as with the future tense, is that are acts the same as an ere verb. So the first thing you need to do is change are to ere, then you copy out the stem that's left um, before the e, so you're just chopping off the last letter, and adding e, este, ebbe, emmo, este, ebbero. In fact, you don't even have to chop off the last letter, you can just memorize i, e, sti, be, etc., but it's just easier to put the vowel there to create the sound of a, s, d, etc. Okay, now let's move on to when we're using um, the conditional tense. So we're using the conditional tense for polite requests. So I can say to you, apri la porta per favore, but it actually sounds nicer if I say, apriresti la porta, would you open the door as opposed to open the door please. Um, Looking at a reflexive verb, for example, in the imperative, it would be passami il sale, per favore, pass me the salt, please. Um, uh, let's instead say, um, would you or could you pass me the salt? Um, mi passeresti il sale. Um, note, as with all um, uh, reflexive um, verbs in any tense, Simply conjugate as normal, but you're adding the reflexive pronoun in front. Um, so it's another way to make polite requests or to make requests um, instead of the imperative, and it's polite, more polite. Um, 
with modal verbs, um, we use the um, conditional for the following meaning. So with potere, it translates to I could, you could, etc. And an example of that would be um, um, potresti um, aprire la porta. Could you open the door? So again, it's a polite request. Um, um, you could say something like uh, asking permission in a polite way. Potrei mangiare qui? Could I eat here? Um, it could also be uh, advice. Potresti um, um, fare attività fisica? You could do physical activity. So it really just translates to the English I could, you could, he could, she could, etc. Dovere, um, the next modal verb, it translates to the English, I, sh I should, you should. So um, maybe um, you could say something like, dovrei studiare di più. I should study more. Or maybe you're telling someone else and giving, telling them what they should do. Um, dovresti um, um, fare più attività fisica. Um, maybe we're talking about someone else and saying what we think they should do. Um, Lisa dovrebbe um, uh, uscire più spesso. Lisa should go out more often. Um, volere is slightly different. It actually translates to I would like, you would like, etc. But you are familiar with this. Um, and it's vorrei. For example, vorrei un bicchiere di vino. I'd like a glass of wine. Um, maybe you're asking someone um, if they would like a coffee. Vorresti uh, un caffè? Um, um, maybe you're saying what a group wants. Um, vorremmo una... Um, vorremmo una prof um, competente. We would like a competent teacher. Um, but the one I really want to focus on for the purpose of this unit, the unit on relationships, is to give advice. So um, we use the conditional tense um, to give advice in Italian. We also give advice using the imperative tense, which we looked at in the context of health and giving advice relating to health, such as um, segui una dieta equilibrata, um, fai più attività fisica, mangia in bianco, etc. Um, so advice... Uh, is often given in the imperative tense but can also be given with the conditional and this is how it works. You start with the, the expression al posto tuo, in your place. Al posto tuo, comma, and then you simply um, use the conditional verb in the io form. So in your place I would do the following. So al posto tuo, uh, in your place, I don't know, um, I'd um, mm, I'd um, study more. Al posto tuo, io studierei di più. Um, al posto tuo, and you don't even need the io, but the verb certainly has to be in the io form. Al posto tuo, io mm, um, lo lascerei. I'd leave him talking about a boyfriend, for example. Voila, um, You could also, um, instead of al posto tuo, use the sentence se io fossi in te, if I were you, and it works the same way. Se io fossi in te, if I were you, um, throw, I'd, I'd find a part time job. Troverei un lavoro. Time. So again, we've got the sentence and then we've got the verb in the conditional tense for the io form and um, any other additional information. Another example, se io fossi in te, um, che ne so, uh, cercherei un'altra amica. I'd look for another friend. Um, giving advice on maybe... Uh, friend that's a boy or something. Now the context of giving advice. Um, generally in an article, in a poster, 
um, in a magazine, you would give advice using the imperative. Um, that's the most appropriate way. However, when talking to a friend, when giving advice to a friend, you can use a mix um, and uh, this particular um, way is, is appropriate for giving um, advice to one person, that person being a friend. So uh, it wouldn't be, um, perhaps, um, you wouldn't find it <clears throat> so much from a psychologist in like a, a D Dolly um, type context, but um, if you're writing an email to a friend and you need to give him advice, um, you can certainly use this and it's quite simple to use. Plus, you could also use the imperative tense. Plus, you could also use potresti, you could, and dovresti, you should, which as you can see, because it's a modal verb, it's always followed by the uh, infinitive, studiare, fare, uscire, etc. Um, of course, there are going to be irregular forms of these verbs and you'll find a list um, on the WordPress.